We are back. I kind of look like, am I a Christmas tree? Because we're getting into the holidays. I feel like the green. It's very Christmas tree-esque. All right, in all seriousness, we are back. And today is a very important video. Why, you ask? Well, it is because we are looking ahead into 2024 and the top technologies to learn going into a new year. This is so important because I know our community is such big learners and constantly looking to upskill. Where can I learn more? How, what should I be putting my focus to? And there's nothing worse than putting your focus to something and it's not even in demand, it's declining. So we are going to be focusing on today the top 10 technologies you should be learning in 2024 if you want to be learning something that's in demand. All right, let's get to it. Actually, before we get to it, one thing I need to tell you about, remind you about, encourage you to join is Takeoff. I recently launched Takeoff. It was back in November and it has been incredible to see your response towards it. Takeoff is a place where you can go to learn from real industry professionals about their career paths. They're going to shed advice for you, give you insights, stay up to date with everything tech related. Basically, Takeoff is a place if you are someone who is looking to grow in your career career, maybe you are a senior, mid, or even junior, this is a place for you. We are going to be launching our private Slack channel come January. So you will get access to a network of incredible individuals who have also signed up by communicating and networking with them and just building that really organic audience. I envision with Takeoff it being a place where if you are interviewing at a company, you can go there and be like, hey, what for this role, for anyone else who works there, would you ask for? What do you suggest? Or a place where you can form study groups. I get very passionate about this. So I'll stop there. I linked takeoff down below. So go sign up, go join today. We have an offer right now for founding members that is going to be going away in the new year once that is completely full. So if you want to save some money, you got to join now. All right, coming in at number 10 is something called green coding. Now, this is a term that I was really introduced to a few years ago when I was working at IBM. They had an entire sustainability section around this, and I found it really fascinating. I thought, what is this green coding? I was picking some of their brains uh, for some of my friends who worked in that sector, and I said, what exactly is this? How would you explain it to me? And they said, it's there are so many ways within coding and building different applications that we can actually be tweaking just very slightly to save so much energy, so much power and resources uh, and code in a more sustainable way. This is something that will really be taken into 2024 as one of the top technologies or skills to learn. Now this necessarily isn't a specific skill, but more so a way of thinking and how you are coding. It will be really important and it will help you also to stand out. This is something that is so simple to start implementing. You can take a course online around green coding or sustainable coding or sustainable software, I should say, and apply it to your day job. Just a little tip, if this is of interest to you, it's a great way to stand out when you are going out for promotions or speaking to your manager. You are taking the initiative to learn something new that you can bring into your day-to-day -day work and will help better the business. 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 I told you it's too close to the holidays. Coming in at number nine is blockchain. And I know sometimes when I hear the word blockchain, unfortunately, it still is tied so closely to, I would say, cryptocurrency or other technologies that had a very quick rise and a very sudden fall. Although cryptocurrency is doing pretty good right now, I think actually. Don't hold me to that, I'm not certain. But blockchain is something that actually PwC recently predicted that the business value add of blockchain is so vast, it is predicted to raise the global economy by 1.76, not billion, trillion by 2023. That's a huge number. So if this is something you are interested in or have already dabbled a little bit in, I know many of us uh, were writing smart contracts and learning everything about blockchain when it was at its peak. If you are still there or still working on it, you are on a good trajectory. And if you're not, it's definitely something that there are so many courses online, once again, that you can start getting your hands on and building and learning about blockchain, both from a technical perspective, but also to a business perspective. Coming in at number eight is virtual and augmented reality. Two different things, but I'm combining them in one because it's kind of under the same sector. And now we see this with future technology. I know our minds automatically go to how this is used when we think of gaming specifically or augmented reality, you know, that very popular game at one point where it was Pokemon, Pokemon, and it was like you were chasing around the Pokemon. I don't know, maybe no one knows what I'm talking about, but that was a thing back in the day. But augmented reality and virtual reality are going to continue to be so in demand in 2024. And honestly, I feel like these are technologies that are kind of under the radar as far as 
so many companies and businesses are working on implementing them, yet it's very rarely showing up on these top technology lists. And I think it's kind of a big miss. I think there's a lot of opportunity there. I'll give you an example of this where I see it really headed in 2024. I went to, it was last year actually, no this year, uh, I went to a conference or an SAP event, it was back in February, and there in that event, they were showing how we can use this technology to do things like virtually try on clothes. So you know those, you're standing there and you don't necessarily have to go into a changing room anymore, you can just see what the clothes would look like when you look into the mirror. Different things like that, real world examples like that, just go to show how powerful this technology is is and how closely it will very soon, I mean it already is, but very closely be intertwined into our daily lives. Also fun fact, Glassdoor says the average salary for an AR VR developer is around 120,000 US. So it's very good paying as well. All right, coming in at number seven is full stack programmer. And I know sometimes we think about, oh, is, is full stack programming declining? People are getting more niche, more specialized. You see it over and over again when it comes to one of the highest uh, trending jobs companies are looking for. It always ends up on this list and it's so true. So what technologies specifically are encompassed with full stack developer? Like what technology specifically should you be learning in 2024? I think there's two here. One definitely being Python, and I know you can come at me, Python you either love or hate, but it is still very in demand. It is, you go on job postings and it's Python they want. The other one being JavaScript. Now JavaScript I feel like is not as sexy if you wanna say that as it used to be. I know a few years ago it was all the rage, everyone was using it, but it is still very in demand and will continue to be in 2024. Coming in at number six is something that used to just live in science fiction movies and we're seeing more and more companies, especially especially companies like IBM, Google, Microsoft, larger tech companies to start with, but you know what happens. It always starts with the larger tech companies and then it trickles down. What is this you ask? It is quantum computing. And this is something that even a few years ago you would hear whispers of or a bit of talk about, but it wasn't really mainstream. And although it's not mainstream necessarily, at this moment in time, we have seen so many articles come out in 2023. You know, IBM made some really big breakthroughs with quantum computing, and we've seen other companies do the same. That in 2024, quantum computing will be more de in demand than it ever has been as far as experts within quantum computing. And what I mean more in demand is companies already, the ones I listed, are hiring at a very quick pace for these roles, for these expertise within quantum computing. Such a cool, Quantum computing is one of those things that just, I always think about it. Not because I'm an expert in it, but because I just find it fascinating as it continues to evolve what it would mean for our world, what problems it will solve, what problems it will create. I don't know, I, am I alone on this? Does anyone else find quantum computing completely fascinating? Leave in the comments. Coming in at number five is cybersecurity experts. Actually, side note, look how good this mug is. Tiff in tech. What does it say? General manager. I'm not a general manager, but when I carry this mug, apparently I am. Cybersecurity though, is an area that companies will continue to hire for at a higher rate than probably ever for the reason being AI. I feel like everywhere we go now, it's AI, AI, AI. But the reality is, think about 2024, what's to come. There's a lot of really big elections coming up in 2024, and now more than ever, AI is able to produce content, images and videos that you cannot tell the difference if it is AI generated or if it actually is an event that happened. So with cybersecurity, they will play such an important role in the security systems for a lot of these elections coming up, for a lot of these big world events coming up. We need experts in cybersecurity, not only on the technical side, the business side as well. Coming in at number four, we had to include this on the list, which is data scientist and data analyst. But for this example or this point, I want to highlight something. When I say data scientist or data analyst, well, let's, you know what, scrap that. Those roles are going to be in demand. But let's talk about more so how everyone, whether you are a marketer, whether you are a developer, will need to have the knowledge or the ability to analyze data. That is something we will see more and more of going into 2024. Having an understanding of using different data analysis tools, depending on what information you are looking to gain. Gone are the days where if you wanted to gain access or information about the data, whether you are running a campaign, whether you are learning how many people filled out a form or went to your website, you shouldn't be relying on external team members or external people to help you with this. We are at an age where 
or a stage in, I think, society where if you want to succeed in your career and really grow, you need to be multifaceted, multifaceted, multifaceted. Told you, the holidays are kicking in. You really do though. And so having an understanding of these technologies that are used is more important than ever when it comes to analyzing data. Now, I'm not going to list any specific tools here because it really depends what role you're in and what tools your company uses, but I would highly suggest taking a look into that. And if your company isn't using a tool to analyze data, take it upon yourself to go see what is out there and what you would want to implement. Coming in at number three is DevOps. In the last couple of years, we've really seen a spike in growth with the demand for DevOps specialists. So what exactly though is DevOps? I feel like it's a term we hear a lot, we throw around a lot, but what is it? I'm not even Italian, but we got some Italian hands going on here. DevOps you can think of as a methodology that is in software development and IT. So essentially it's used as a set of practices and tools. It integrates and automates the work of software development and IT operations to improve and shorten the systems development life cycle. So there's so many different areas of specialties within DevOps, and that's what makes it really exciting and why I wanted to include it on this list is because whether you are more interested in the tooling side of things, whether you're more interested in the scripting side of things, there are very there are so many roles under this umbrella, but people who are able to have these skills with DevOps around unification and automating the processes for a company will continue to be higher and higher in demand, especially as we closely tie AI to a lot of these processes. Coming in at number two is AI ethicist. And this is really interesting to me, this role, and really what they do, what technologies they use, all of this under this umbrella. So what exactly does an AI ethicist do? Well, for one thing, they keep your company that you are working at really grounded and held responsible for how we are using AI, building tools with generative AI, and what that looks like. Let's take a step back here. The ethical issues that come from AI are very complex, and that is why this role is continuing to be more in demand than ever. Companies don't want to be implementing these AI toolings or building these different models only to find out that they are not that ethical. That would be I mean, game over for a lot of these companies. And that's why this role is becoming so in demand. And I think this is really important to note. Uh, I'm actually reading on screen here a report from Deloitte that goes into what exactly an AI ethicist is, an AI bias, and something they know, which I think is really interesting, is around, you know, this role is required expertise in technology, uh, compliance, philosophy, psychology, you get the point, everything in between as well, which sounds great, but not one person can fill this role or fill it properly. And I think Deloitte is a good point on pointing out that companies should take a team approach to AI ethics versus just hiring one individual, which you can't find someone or it'd be very difficult who could cover all of those. So if you are interested in AI, but maybe have a background in psychology or uh, philosophy, different things like that, you can tie those two together for AI ethics, which is pretty cool if you ask me. Coming in at number one, you know it's going to be AI related as well. Listen, I only got two AI ones on the list of 10, so give me give me some slack. I know all we do is talk about AI recently, but it's here to stay. That is why number one is machine learning engineer. Companies wherever you look are hiring for this role. You could call it, um, some companies you know are calling it generative AI engineer, some machine learning, although two different, you know, not the same role specifically, but a lot of the same skill sets going into it. I think this is one of those things where now is better than ever if you are interested in these roles or these technologies behind these roles to start learning on your own time. Because the demand for them is so high, they're not going to necessarily, or all companies anyways, aren't going to require very specific criteria of you needed to go to university for this and have this many experience. If you can show your knowledge through your skill set, you have a very good chance of getting a very high paying job within these roles. That is something that even though, you know, if you look back a year ago when ChatGPT was just released, I mean, it was released in November to see how far we've come, how much we've evolved with AI, it's not going anywhere. It's continuing to grow very quickly and the demand for these roles will follow as well. All right, those are the top technologies, top roles that are going to be in demand come 2024, which is right around the corner. I honestly, I know it sounds cheesy and people, I think we're in a, a stage now where we always try and say, oh, New Year's resolutions, they're silly, don't do them. Honestly, I really like doing them. It gives me direction and purpose as to where I wanna put my focus to come 2024. And I'd highly suggest you to do the same, just not on this grandiose scale where it becomes so intense and so much pressure you put on yourself, it's unrealistic, but 
Start off by having a New Year's resolution to learn one of these technologies, and that could be it. Maybe a little each day. My camera's moving on its own. It's very unique. I don't know how it did that. Um, no, it's the microphone. Anyways, thank you all for watching this video. Happy holidays to you all. Leave in the comments other technologies you think will be in demand come 2024. Hit that subscribe button, and I gotta go eat some more Christmas cookies now.